Well, there's a lot of words we could use to sum up the year we've had. Perhaps top of the list could be social distancing. Nobody knew what that meant last year. Social distancing, another word for that is loneliness. This year, many of us have experienced loneliness in a way we never could have imagined. It was a big problem before COVID and it's been an even bigger problem since. Yet the message of Christmas offers hope to us in our loneliness. Hello, welcome to our midweek meditations. It's a short time every Wednesday where we simply pause, ponder the Bible and pray together. And yes, we've got a Christmas tree, it's getting near to Christmas. Um, and this week we're going to have a look at Matthew chapter 1, um, beginning at verse um, 22. And I'm going to read that for us in a moment. Now, let me pray for us first. Heavenly Father, we thank you for all your kindness to us. Thank you that you are God who speaks and whose word gives comfort. We pray that we would find comfort in the midst of our loneliness from your word. Amen. Well, if you tuned in to us last week, we saw the first part of this lovely little passage. We have Joseph finding the unexpected. His fiancée is pregnant. And then the angel appears to him in a dream and tells him this is no ordinary child. You're to call his name Jesus, because he's going to save his people from their sins. That's the first name that Jesus has been given. But we said last week there's a second name. We're going to have a look at this second name. So let me read from Matthew 1, beginning at verse 22. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel which means God with us. When Joseph woke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took his wife, but knew her not until she had given birth to a son, and he called his name Jesus. Emmanuel. I don't know what your favourite Christmas song is. What is the, the, the Christmas song that really gets you in the mood? You know, that, that festive feeling, that joyful feeling that we kind of long for at Christmas time? This, the shops pump them out, don't they, these songs? I guess probably not high on most of our lists for the feel-good Christmas factor is that hit song, Lonely This Christmas. Are you the one that'll be lonely this Christmas without you to hold? Lonely this Christmas, lonely and cold. Not the most cheery of songs, is it? Well, for so many people, that is going to be the reality of their Christmas. It's going to be lonely this Christmas. Perhaps that's you. But we know, isn't it? It's not just Christmas time that we feel loneliness. For this year, so many people have struggled with loneliness more than ever. And we've seen some of the fallout in our society, suicide, depression, giving in to addictions. It's hard. Loneliness is hard for the, the widow who's been on her own. And this year has even been even harder. She hasn't been able to see family except through the window or on the iPad, and it's not the same. Or oh, there's the man who struggles with depression, and no one really understands what it's like, and he feels isolated, alone in his suffering. Or well, the young boy in the school playground that his friends have moved away, and He's got no one to play with. Loneliness is hard. And for many of us, it is going to be lonely this Christmas. And social distancing has played a huge part in that, hasn't it? It's really hard 
to stay at a distance and not feel lonely. When you have to stay two metres apart and not hug the ones you love, that is so lonely. Yeah, well, this passage that we've just been reading offers real hope in the midst of our loneliness. Did you hear that second name? The first name Jesus given is Jesus. You should call his name Jesus because he's going to save, save his people from their sins. He's going to deal with our biggest problem. But there's more. He's also called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means, Matthew helpfully gives us a translation, so we don't need to know our Hebrew, which means God with us. God with us. That's who Jesus is. He is the one who is God. He is the eternal God, the, the creator of everything, the sustainer of everything. The one who is a source of life and light and every good thing. Now, now what's your view of God? For, for so many people, our view of God is of someone distant. Someone who may have set the world running, but they stand at a distance. Someone who may have dealt us certain cards in life, and we have to do the best we can with those cards, but while well, he watches on from a distance. Years ago, there was that hit song, From a Distance. The idea of God watching this world just, just from a distance, not really involved. But Jesus shatters that image. Jesus is God with us. He is the one who is truly God, the eternal Son of God, who has come to be with us. Think just of that word with. We don't usually think about it. With is intimate. A husband with his wife. Family with one another. It's togetherness. God has come to be with human beings in the person of Jesus. That baby was born, the one who is God, experienced human birth and came into this world to be God with us. Now, now who is the us that he's talking about? Well, the us, if we read through the rest of Matthew's gospel, we find the us is all those who willingly embrace Jesus who take hold of him for themselves, who receive him. What does he say to them? Well, at the very end of Matthew's gospel, Jesus says to those who've left everything to follow him, he says, surely I am with you always to the very end of the age, with you. So you see, if you've taken hold of Jesus, God is with you. And that gives so much hope. Yes, it doesn't take away all the pain and sorrow of loneliness, but it gives us so much hope in the midst of our loneliness. We have one who is with us who will never leave us and never forsake us. God with us. To the, to the elderly widow, we had to make do with seeing her children through a glass window for the last few months. Here is hope, here is encouragement, God with us. To the man who has been struggling in the darkness of depression and feels utterly alone in that cave, God with us. To the young boy in the playground, just feeling so low because he's got no one to play with, perhaps being ignored, God with us. This is God with us, God with us to sustain us. Not just with us, kind of watching from a distance, but with us closely. If we have received Jesus, he is intimately with us by his spirit. He is with us. Jesus knows what it is to experience what we've experienced. He's known loneliness. He's known rejection. He's known abandonment. He's known pain. He's known suffering with us in all that we experience, but also with us to help us and rescue us through all that, with us to sustain us and with us one day to bring us so that we are with him in a world where there is no more social distancing. 
No more pain, no more sadness, no more loneliness. Just God with us and us with God eternally. This Christmas, may you find deep hope and deep encouragement in the one who is God with us. Let me pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you that in our loneliness we can have hope because of Jesus, the one who is God with us. Please uphold us, please sustain us, and please keep our eyes fixed on him. We ask this in the precious name of your Son, Emmanuel, who is God with us. Amen. Well, thank you so much for tuning in and for joining us. And thank you to all those who've tuned in to these midweek meditations over the course of the year. Uh, we do pray that this has been an encouragement to you. We're going to have a little break now for Christmas, but we'll be back again, God willing, in the new year. But can I wish you from all of us a very, very happy Christmas. And do be assured of our prayers that you would know the joy of God with us. A very happy Christmas.